Hello and welcome to another episode of the Plus 63 HP Podcast Reviews Edition. I'm one of your hosts, John Clemente. Alongside with me are two of my bestest best friends. I'm going to start, as usual, with the man with the pink headset, Trebox. How are you doing? Good, good, good. A little tired, but uh, we're not as tired as last week. <laughs> yeah. Also with us is another one of our bestest best friends, the man from the West Coast waking up at an ungodly hour to join us at the record. Arnie, how are you doing? Hello there. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm just enduring and surviving. Enduring and surviving. Enduring. And if you are also enduring and surviving with us, and this is your first time in our channel, thank you very much for the view. You're really, really, really appreciated. We hope that you would subscribe to our channel by going to youtube.com slash plus six three HP. We have shows almost every day on Mondays and Tuesdays. We drop review shows like this where we discuss in detail a show or a movie that we want to discuss uh, that week. We provide our opinions, our ratings, so you can know whether you should watch it with by yourself or with your friends and your family. On Wednesdays, we drop our D&D campaign. We're very, very first as middle-aged old men. Uh, we started this campaign over a year ago, we're having a great time. Uh, we are recording it for posterity, putting it on the interwebs for you guys to join the adventure. So hop on there every Wednesday if you want to join us uh, and our other friends as well. On Thursdays, we have a curated list of trailers, featurettes, uh, short videos, all of the you know snippet contents that we watch and see whether we're, how much hype we are in order to watch uh, the content coming down the pipe. So those come out every Thursdays. And on Fridays, because Chabax and our other friend, bestest best friend, RJ, uh, cannot get enough of D&D, uh, they spun off another campaign where they are the bad guys, and those drop every Friday. Yeah. So with that, please, uh, like and subscribe on to our channel. Hit that notification bell on YouTube. If you don't want to watch our faces, you can also listen to us in your favorite podcasting app of choice. That's just search plus 63HP. Um, and we shall be there. Our favorite podcast apps are Apple, Spotify, and Amazon. Uh, and please interact with us. We are in all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just add the handle at plus six three HP. All right, housekeeping done. This week, we are very excited to discuss a movie that has come out uh, quite a number of months ago, but it recently dropped uh, on HBO Max and in your streaming TV channel of choice as well. Uh, so uh, we all enjoyed it. So we were my wife discuss. hated it. Oh, I, <laughs> I'm surprised. sure somebody will have a vi visceral reaction. No, wait, oh, wait uh, for next week. Are we just doing Last of Us or something else? Mm. Glass Onion? Uh, I want to watch Megan. Glass Onion. What? Megan? Megan. I've seen Megan, so we can, we can do okay. Megan. Megan. Um, oh, it's short. It's like an hour. It's a hundred and five minutes. Yeah, let's so let's do it. Define. Okay. Right. So, so anyway, sorry. Back to the menu. Back to the menu. Uh, we uh, we dropped on HBO Max a couple of months ago. We've seen it. We're gonna discuss it. Whether you should watch it yourself. Some will have different people will have different sorts of reaction or different types of 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 likes and dislikes. Yeah. Why they like or dislike the movie. That's some, why it's when I posted discussion. about it, somebody already this it like commented that it wasn't the best. Right. It's uh it's one of those it's one of those uh think type movies. But before we get into the actual plot, um a little bit of stats and then I'll bring it to the boys for their initial non spoilery reactions for the people that haven't seen the movie. But it was directed by Mark Mylod. Uh, okay. Written by what's, what's he done? Seth Rice and then Will Tracy. So Seth Rice and Will Tracy doesn't have IMDb stuff. So okay. it seems that they haven't really done anything of note mm -hmm. or as big as this project. So good on them for for um, getting all this. And also uh, Mark Mylod has very, very little film. He has he 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 directed Ali G in the house. So a little okay. comedic, right? So that's a little good. departure. Okay. Um, I don't know what the big white house is or what's your number. I think what's your number is this movie. Like, what's your number meaning? How many? I think it's I uh, know it's Chris Evans and uh, Chris Evans, right? Like the, the one. Yeah, how many Body people count. that you have sex with, right? Yeah. yeah. Body um, count. Yep. Um, but um, the most recently he has written the he has written 
uh, a lot of episodes or six episodes of Game of Thrones. So he has uh, okay. experience okay. with an ensemble. And he has written 13 episodes <sighs> of Succession. I haven't seen Succession. I, I don't want to me. I want you. Right? But from what we know, it's, it's about good. like, mm-hmm. you know, plus one percent. It's really good. It's critically acclaimed. So so he has some some um, experience there. Also, yes, he, he directed Entourage, Shameless, a lot of these kind of okay. quality stuff. personality shows. So he has, um, you know, he has a lot of experience. But, of course, um, produced by Adam McKay and Will Ferrell. So, okay. you know, Adam McKay does a lot of those political, satiric comedic mm-hmm. movies um and but also everybody knows that the reason why this has popped into anybody's radar my ex-girlfriend stars in it and uh, taylor joy ralph fines stars in it as well Rafe. nicholas holt Rafe. beast himself is there it's Chow, right, right, right. One of them. Hmm? it's rafe 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 fines yeah voldemort make I've it easy voldemort is there years. Hong Chao won an award because of this particular role. I think it was uh, supporting something. Ooh, cool. uh, the the basically the uh, I think the receptionist yes. slash the the Asian check. The, the, oh, the, 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 the main assistant. The yeah, the main assistant. Uh, the, the main the main sous chef. He she won an award for best supporting actress of, of for that particular role. So you know. Oh, we got um. John Leguizamo, right? And uh, John Leguizamo is there. Amy Carrero, she, the past, the, the, the past is. Yeah, I, I uh, know her from. Uh, she she did the uh, critical role had a uh, eight episode miniseries, I mini 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 campaign, and she was there, and she was awesome. Like wow, she was, she was so good. Uh yeah, she, what's her name again? Amy, Amy Carrero. Carrero. Felicity John Leguizamo's. Um, assistant. assistant John Leguizamo is actually unnamed here. She's, he's just a movie star, which is kind of indicative how these uh, <laughs> um, people go. Um, but he's, yeah, he's uh, the best. Have, uh, uh, Janet McTeer is there as well. Uh, this came out in the cinema September 10th of 2022, right? Mm-hmm. In internationally, it only came into the states in November 18th, so it had a little bit of like um. Um, small release, uh, Toronto International Film Festival release kind of thing, and then it got steam and then got to the states in a wider release. It's only 107 minutes, so it's pretty awesome. It's under mm-hmm. two hours, very tight, perfectly done. Tight, um, tight, tight. The budget of the film is 30 million bucks, so Ooh. I think it's oh. you know, I thought it, it felt a little bigger, but if you really think about it, it's just fucking. It was one, a restaurant. One, yeah. it's a, it one spot, right? Possibly like, you know, a rich person's living room with a few tables in it and some fake food. Um, and it grossed $79.6 million in the box office. So it's, it's money back. Good. Yeah. It's good. Usually our, our our blockbuster range is you need to make two times your budget to make it successful this came close 79 is just about 11 million bucks short than 90 million bucks but i'm sure it has get, gotten a lot of steam like i i was very tempted to buy it uh video on demand but i heard it was going to come out on hbo max for a little bit after so i saw it i saw this in the theaters but uh, before we get into the the plot and some spoilery stuff initial reactions literally right after you saw the menu we'll start with the arnie well, the plot twist was not what I expected, but yeah, uh, the food looked great. Uh, the the food consultant, the chef that they had, they hired was uh, Dominique Cred. So Ooh. she's a, so she's a local chef here in SF, and you could see her in Iron Chef. So to give I you saw an idea, Iron Chef. I saw her yeah. in a um, Chef's Table too. Chef's Table too. So mm-hmm. it's it's legit, and yeah, and yeah, we'll talk more when we when we get to the spoiler thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm with the, with the opposite with Arnie. I thought the food was fucking pretentious, <laughs> but I love <laughs> the which, yeah. no, I, mean, I said visual, legit. I mean, I said legit. Yeah, well, it, 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 it is fucking pretentious to me, but it looked nice. I mean, visually, it looked good. I mean, I lo- I, I I really liked the movie. I enjoyed it. Maybe a little, maybe disappointed a little in the in the 
in like some parts in the twist not the twist itself but I will discuss it later what, what parts but I mean I love the act I love mm-hmm. I love all the the shocks and the the awes it was fucked up yeah. and uh, and that's the primary reason why I love I liked it and my wife didn't because it's weird it's mm-hmm. it's my as she said it's my type of film so she she, she really did not enjoy it I thought she was because she was reacting and she was like commenting and stuff. But then at the end, like she didn't, she didn't really like it. Yeah. I uh, I love this movie all yeah. because again, it is it was hitting on the places where it should. Like you know, it's about the food culture on how yeah pretentious it could be, but how basic mm-hmm. it could be, how simple it could be, how emotional it could be that somebody mm-hmm. would go to certain lengths just to eat this food. Some people will take it for granted. Some people will save their entire lives to watch it. So I love all of that rolled into uh-huh. one. I like that it's weird. Um, And I'm a big fan of Chef's Table, not because mm. of the food, because one, like I would eat McDonald's and I'll be happy, right? Uh, it's more of like, it's so, it's so overproduced. That you know, at, you know, when you watch an episode of Chef Say, it's like, dude, it's just a fucking twig, man. It's mm-hmm. don't worry about it. But you watch it long enough to say, like, you know what? Yeah, that is kind of like the the taste of spring. <laughs> right? So mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things that it's just so wild, wildly different. It's it's like it's art, basically. Like you know, you put some people will put value on it that you don't understand, but you know, the the great stuff will rise. Oh, through. yep. And so that's I enjoy that, but for the most part, I enjoyed it because there are certain parts of the movie you can see, you can literally like even from the trailer, you know what's gonna happen. Like you mm-hmm. kind of have an understanding of what's gonna happen. But there are certain parts that I just didn't understand until like towards the end. Like, yeah. why is this person here? What is he doing? Mm-hmm. Why is you know? So like, I. That twist was fun to me. Uh, towards the end, I kind of knew at some some version of that would happen. Yeah. Um, and I kind of I I was left satisfied with how it ended. It's not it's not a not knockout ending, but for me, it's like the setup in the middle that was it for me. I I did I wasn't I feel like me and me and me and Kat were the same. Where I enjoyed watching it, but it didn't feel good while you know the courses were coming out and the things were and the things were unraveling hmm. i didn't feel good on what was happening. i was cringing but you know me feeling cringe was very that was the indicative was like oh i think that was the point yeah. that was the point no exactly. that, that, that was like, the oh, point that was the point it's yeah. making me feel stuff mm-hmm. uh and my, what i'm feeling might be different by what you're feeling because like for me like i fucking uh I, I hear my other quote unquote foodie friends in some of the people there. I hear my quote my mm-hmm. my few finance bro friends that are there too, mm-hmm. like being douches like shit. It's like flashbacks. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. oh, I'm making it so totally, totally enjoy it. Um all right, we're gonna do a very, very simple synopsis and then we'll just like pass the baton along and feel free to you jump in and at any point to add uh, context and flavor in terms of the spots. Right. But let's start. Right. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the the simple idea is that there the it revolves around a foodie, Tyler, and his date Margot. So Tyler is Nicholas Holt. Margot, initially Margot, is my ex girlfriend Anya Taylor Joy. They travel to a place secluded island or like excluded restaurant operated by celebrity chef Julian Slovic, right? So it's basically it's like 12, 12, 1250 12 bucks, seats. something like that. Yeah. To, yeah. to get into a, and they serve you for like uh, maybe lunch in the, or, or one meal. So you, one meal. Yeah, full dinner. You, it's a, a tasting full, menu. A full, full, yeah, a full dinner and there's only like uh, limited seats per day. And they were two mm-hmm. of those, yeah. Yeah, very limited seats per day, very limited uh, days per week. It's, it's a full experience from the boat ride. You know, you already have aperitifs to the tour of the island on where they source their materials. Mm-hmm. Everything was like very, very. Uh, it's essentially the epitome of what a a, a multi course meal would be. It's the entire experience, mm-hmm. not just the food. So, in in summary. 
When dinner begins, Chef Slovic introduces a series of dishes, delivering mm -hmm. some weird ass speech, explaining what each dish is. We won't go through every dish, but you know, it starts, you know, sometimes a little complex, a little in depth. Some dishes are super simple and funny. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's just fucking air, or there's nothing here. There's or no bread. It's, it's the without it's, the bread. It's, Breadless. It's a dip without bread. So there's certain um very, very like if you're like a, a foodie, you'll understand that it's kind mm -hmm. of part of the experience. But if you're fucking hungry, give me some fucking bread. I'm paying twelve hundred bucks for a meal, and mm -hmm. you're not giving me shit. All right. So that's kind of like the variance of responses into these seemingly highfalutin meals that they were eating. However, mm -hmm. at the end of like um uh, like at the start of maybe like the third course of many, um, each guest starts feeling a little bit more uncomfortable in terms of the details that were being said about the experience and the meal that they were doing. And their lives. And their lives, right? Mm -hmm. So there are certain meals that will have some like a uh, a printed uh, things that they've done uh, <laughs> yeah, like legally the, or wrong, like uh, personal. Each each meal was personalized for. Oh no, not personal, but um, each meal like the printout of, of the information that was personalized to eat, to each uh, client. Uh, Tortilla. Uh, what do you call them? Yeah. Uh, the pizza customer. Pizza, yeah. Customer. Yeah. 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 So it's basically saying that, that uh, the chef knew their secrets. Yeah. The and then this is where you kind of see that it's turning. That is, it's not just, uh, you know, initially I thought it was like, maybe it's the, the reason why the food tastes so good is because they sacrifice a a guest every meal and that's going to be mm. their ingredients. That's that what I thought. Initial, yeah, that was the initial right? trailer, uh, the feeling that you got from the trailer. Yeah. So, yeah. but we realize now that it's a little bit more complex and deep than that. Because, having these... I mean, that's been done. That's yeah. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. Yeah. Hannibal. Yeah, right? Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Shit. Uh, and, uh, question: uh, Would you eat Hannibal Lecter's food or this pretend? Like, if I didn't know, if, if I, I didn't, didn't know. know, if I didn't know, yes. <laughs> Who knows once, if we've been eating people right now already, right? But once I, I know, next question will be who. <laughs> Uh, so around so the the third course was where certain illegal affairs, illegal stuff of the guests have been found out through it through laser printing on fucking tortillas, right? Yep. And then the next meal, the fourth meal, is where one of the sous chefs who one shows uh, how unbelievably dedicated these sous chefs are to Chef Slovak. Um, kills himself in front of the guests. Like, you know, it's like a very touching scene about because he was never is he happy, yesterday. you know, yeah, following your dream, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so this kind of cost started to cause panic, but of course, there's some people in the in the meal, in the guests that say, like, oh, it's part of the experience, right? It's just yeah. part of the experience. So that's funny too. They thought it's like a mystery dinner <laughs> acting. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also as uh, you know, things started like you know another sous chef uh, cuts off his finger. Uh, oh, sorry, one of the guests tried to leave, mm -hmm. so that guest's finger gets cut off. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is where things turn to like, all right, you're stuck here. The investor of the actual Hawthorne place, which is some of the guests are personal friends or close friends with the owner of the. Mm -hmm. Or investor of the the um the the, the restaurant itself mm -hmm. um tried to threaten uh Chef Slovic if they mm -hmm. weren't released, but you know, the investor himself, Doug Varick, um he 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 was drowned. <laughs> the angel investor. He was he was an angel investor, so he was ceremoniously drowned with angel wings in the lake overlooking uh or so uh with the people overlooking that lake. So that was fun. So more and more as we go through um, uh, different experiences of employees and different experience mm -hmm. of the people, um, we kind of we kind of see that uh, or or Slovic explains that uh, it took him a while to plan this experience, this meal, but 
to put all of these people's group together mm-hmm. that each of them each of the guests uh were selected because they have done something wrong to someone some to them oh, and more specifically to her to Slovak I, I contributed to him losing his passion for his craft because his art has been exploited into some other means by some in, in different ways mm-hmm. right. this um, is my question like I think the one that got the short end of the or could have had the short end of the is Don Leguizamo. What? No, I mean, in, in the end, it was okay because he was an, he turned out to be an ass. But what if he was a nice guy? But he was just big because he made a bad movie. <laughs> or maybe I mean, did, did Slovik pick him because he, when he researched on him, he knew he turned out to I be an ass. I think that was more like yeah. probably. Same, like, sometimes, like, I don't care whether he is good or bad. So one side is, I don't care whether he's a good person or a bad person. He has kids. He has a loving family. Your movie was so bad, you destroyed my art. Yeah. <laughs> That was fun, right? Yeah. Um, this is where the movie starts taking like a bigger turn because the character Margot seemed to be the only person out of place in, in this particular mm-hmm. scenario where people were brought in to be punished to a certain extent yeah. because they um, wronged Slovak in some sort of way. And then we realized uh, that uh, after a couple of like private conversations of Slovak trying to tell Margot to leave, trying to figure out where she is, or is she staff the or takers or the givers? Right. So he, because um, that's the only person Slovak. No, we find out that Slovak's date Tyler, right, hired Margot as uh, so Margot is an escort. And was hired to go with him here into this place. Tyler, knowing what's going to happen in this particular place, um, still opted to bring in like a un- unknowing, seemingly mm-hmm. innocent person to this purgatory, right? So, the, so that was did they say why he replaced? Yes. No, the the the, the thing he broke up with his girlfriend. Yeah, so or, the or girlfriend or supposed to bring broke up with him. Okay, okay. Right. So, so he didn't do it lucky. on purpose. He didn't do it on purpose. They yeah. broke up, and he knew, or Tyler knew that Slovak doesn't seat single one. Yeah. So he had to hire an escort to join him there. Right. So, um, of course, uh, there's a, a couple of instances where there are parts of the experience was um, the guests being uh, uh, hunted. Right, mm-hmm. and then brought back, uh, or at least the man, the the men were being hunted, and the women that, stayed. Uh, that t- turned out to be a the lesser movie you'd expect them to be hunted, killed, you know, hurt. But they, mm-hmm. they, they was basically just hide and seek, and then they brought back yeah. everybody and even fed them again, <laughs> gave mm-hmm. the ice cream to the last one that they found. Like <laughs> I yeah. love it. It's again the the good thing is like there's le- little blips of like some version of experience like oh, even the okay. conversation with the yes. women right and you know, they started banding together <laughs> so yeah. um uh, but yeah long and short we realized that um yeah oh we're we're getting to a crescendo where everybody in that place is going to be killed and you know including mm-hmm. Slovic including Mark's um, staff including Slovic's mom which was you know also contributed to his kind of um. This uh, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, 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 losing the love and his passion. But yeah. um, Margot, having had opportunities to be see a little bit more of the place, see Slovics. Uh, so he was put into um the drier place, or the yeah, the the dry rub place of of some meats. Dry, the dry age, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the and and Slovic's particular office, which is essentially sneaked into his exact- house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like the exact same layout as the the restaurant itself. So it's like, oh, he's living here. This is his life. He kind of gets a little bit more of uh, Slovik's personal workings on how how he takes, and then he realized that, or at least Margot now being outed as an escort, and her real name is Erin. Um, mm-hmm. She um, uh, realizes that. <clears throat> Uh, the Slovak's loveless cooking is because he was uh, um, 
uh, you know, well, Slovic losing his love for cooking is because he forgot where he came from. So yeah, uh, he started um, egg egging, obsession, right? Came yeah. an obsession to something. Yeah, he started egging. Uh, she started. Aaron started egging um, Slovic to go way, way back to the last time that I he, think she. Yeah, no, yeah. It was the the way he lost his way is he focused on the wrong thing. He focused on like perfecting yeah. his art. When feeding someone is prob- should be, I mean, it, there's a way there, but it's most likely feeding is to make somebody happy from your yeah. yeah. Your it's food, uh, right? it's basically a commentary on all the Michelin stars, hundred percent, uh, and then the Top Chef and uh, all these. If, if there's a lot of documentaries in Netflix, you, you would get into the minds of all these chefs, and uh, yeah, I was I was almost certain that. You know, even so when they were plating certain food and the music comes in. So it's like, oh, I'm sure one of the editors of uh, of Chef's Table was there too. <laughs> to to yeah, kind of yeah, make yeah. it sound insane. Yeah. But um, in the end, Margot requests uh, something that she thought Slovik would enjoy cooking because it will bring Slovik when he, uh, to his childhood when he started cooking, which is just cheeseburgers and fries. And then... Um, oh yeah, a little bit of a connection there, creating that dish. We kind of see Slovig enjoy and, making, and it's dishes. a cheap burger too, nine ninety nine. Yeah, and then not you even that. You don't um, get that anymore over here. <laughs> but not even that. Um, like, uh, um, Anya Taylor Joy or Erin takes it to go because you know she was full. Yep. Um, and then that was kind of like a, a little, um, a little uh, key to realize that oh she did she really didn't deserve to be there mm-hmm. um and everybody else was uh so i thought like so that was kind of like one of the places where i thought the the place the movie would end but yeah. i didn't realize like oh they were gonna go through with it like yeah, yeah everybody yeah. else uh died and yeah. you know burned uh, in, in a lesser movie her cheeseburger order would have changed the minds of the of the chef and the staff but mm-hmm. no there's still no, which for me is the proper ending it should be yeah like that and the other yeah. side because they commit it it's it's committed it's commitment right the other side of it too is just like you know maybe when when anya taylor joy left and they started preparing to be burnt alive in the restaurant i thought mm-hmm. like all right maybe maybe the guests will because slovic already was a little bit uh um uh the, uh uh dissolved like you know mm-hmm. he was he, he was beaten he was seen or maybe it's just slovic and then everybody else will leave or maybe it's a slovic and the staff was complicit in the punishment of these people but no even the guests themselves yep they're like yep i, I like, think oh, <laughs> the way i took it it was like it was too little too late like yeah they they yeah. realized he realized that this is the joy that he missed but then he he was able to realize also like it is something that he missed for f- how many forty years or something like. Yeah, I did fuck up. So let's <laughs> they're like yeah. shit. So let's yeah, plus, for me, yeah, plus for there's me, already the guests. The guests they, stayed. Yeah. They did, at the end. They didn't fight there. Their... Not only that, they egged Margot to to go. Uh, and, yeah, and, and Slavic yeah. even mentioned, in, I think you know, in a previous uh, setting, like you guys could have just banded it up and got away together, but you guys didn't even didn't. do it. So, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, f- for like, me, like uh, the first time I only seen it, but when I was watching it, it was like that. That was the like the cheesiest way they can go for for her to escape. Yeah, obviously, like bringing his joy back, but yeah, it's cheesy. That was the, as I think about it, but oh, the cheeseburger, the is way cheesy, that yeah. again, this is where casting comes in. The way that Ray finds Margot did that scene. It was exquisite. Yeah. Like, it was so good. Yep. Like him doing the burger and the, his reactions, his face, the way she said it, the way to go. It's uh, it, uh, it was it was. It's Voldemort and Neville Longbottom. Basically, what happened there? Uh, <laughs> it's just, it was, it, I, I I I love the 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 guests resolve at the end. It's like yeah, yeah. they they kind of, they kind of do deserve to die. It's like it's yeah, it's great, but. That's where the movie ends. The restaurant burns up. Uh, Aaron, Mar- FKA Margot, um, takes a boat out to the desert. And then the movie ends with the restaurant burning and 
some boats coming in to kind of like say and she's stuff. eating a burger she's, yeah. she's, and she took it to go so she got you know yeah. she was full she wasn't full what the fucking make up your mind lady if um, you're a burger joint and you're not hiring anya taylor joy for an ad you are not doing your job i mean that made me want to eat a hamburger after that movie yeah so and that and also for me that i guess the only thing that i wanted to see more is how did he get these like 20 30 chefs to to yeah. eat, to do everything like to commit like this you know but then well it's a cultish it's a cult group, but also like this is very very true in the restaurant true. world right so uh, so we're now in the discussion part because that movie mm-hmm. so so shortly after the movie was uh, released uh, I don't know if you heard of Noma uh, the the this big fancy frou frou restaurant in uh, I think it's in Denmark right decided that they're going to close uh, because the the chef is feeling like he's no longer he's losing his passion and all that stuff and but that restaurant uh, it's been featured in chef's table a few of their a few of their graduates basically former staff members have opened their own restaurants some have opened their own food trucks or pop-ups which when I saw it, I was like, why just a pop-up? Why not just open a restaurant? You had a really good resume. You make the same amount of money. Yeah. Uh, but People forget, after... like, food trucks, uh, in, because yeah. of the overhead, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. like, as, yeah. a, as a proprietor. Yeah, and the thing is, like, uh, after watching this movie and all, all the commentary after it, it did, it did make sense because a lot of these people, they go into internships to Noma unpaid, and it, it, sometimes even at their own expense, yeah. just just to say that they worked at this place, and then it becomes very cultish. And then uh, there was also a part of the movie that uh, the one of the female chefs revealed that uh, Slavic tried to f her basically, uh, and the sexual harassment and abuses oh. that happened, and yeah, it, and we all know what happened to that chef. Uh, what's his name? Um, Batali. Batali. Uh, so that's another thing that's happened there. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Oh, you, you never heard of that? Yeah. Uh, so Mario Batali. Well, the th- here's the thing. Allegedly, yeah. he had a uh, a sex room on top of his restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> in, in Italy, <laughs> here in New York, in Fidei. But again, because these, it, it's not just, you know, a restaurant, a, a five star restaurant or a fancy ass mm. restaurant, an office. An organization institution. These top heads, these CEOs, these owners, these chefs, you need to be a little crazy to drive, to be driven to make something that mm-hmm. successful. And yeah. this is like the ego talking. Most chefs have this giant ego that says mm-hmm. that the way that I make things, the way that I taste things is better than everybody else. So you mm-hmm. need to have that ego. So part yeah. of that ego is like, yeah, you know. You know the sex room in in Italy in New York, um, and yeah, um, yeah, you're right. Like people, we've seen it all the time. Every single uh, chef that we know right now uh, studied under an even more popular chef yeah. before them, getting paid nothing for decades. Yeah, right, and uh, working 12, 16 hours every day, six days a week, before being able to like you know get an investor and get something like that to yeah. run their own stuff. It's it's the it's that's that's how the system works for for restaurateurs. Yeah, plus it's a, it's a, it's an industry that's rife for abuse, uh, either the owner or investors. Heck, even the even the fucking customers sometimes. Sorry for my language. Exactly. <laughs> They're very they could be very abusive towards the staff. The fucking Nicholas Hall. Oh, and uh, yeah, and yeah, and even the food uh, one of the guests, uh, the food critic as well. And of course, Nicholas Holt, the, the pretentious food foodie and all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, uh, but it, it's basically a social commentary, uh, not just the food industry, but, uh, you know, the whole, because uh, right now there's this movement like uh, experiences over things, right? Uh, people are just like, oh, I just want to pay for experiences, but it's more of like, oh, it's for all for the gram or all for the thing and all that stuff, right? So... Yeah, we could talk more about the the pretentiousness. Yeah, we, we could do that too. And every guest there has a little 
Mm-hmm. You know, there's never a little microcosm of what they represent. The finance bros with you know kids that think that they own pe- things just because they have money. Yeah, yeah, and then the food critic, the food and... critic that they you know they're they're just people. Yep. And then and they then... have this certain power of building or breaking down. So that's the, the commentary with the food critic. It's like, you know, she was one that, that built Hawthorne up or at least mm-hmm. Slovak up. And then, and then she could destroy careers. She just brought him down again, just because of something. A a split uh, sauce or something like that. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh yeah, but I I didn't realize that when Shabaks had mentioned about John Leguizamo, it's like you you were just doing your job and you made such a horrible movie and yeah. then get killed for it. In the explanation for that scene, like I have only. This day off, and I watched your movie. Yeah, Well, if it was your only day off in six months, yeah, I mean, I would be pissed too if the movie I watched turned out to be crap. But but it's also a commentary on a lot of the artists. It just just takes a payday, even though it sucks, right? But you know, you just, uh, just like with um, Henry and Sam and Last of Us, you just have to look at the context. Was it a payday because they needed the money, or is it a payday because they didn't care anymore, right? Mm. But yeah, I mean, and before people start saying that we're just haters, like you know, I, I've eaten in some places, like uh, quote unquote special hey, star places. Uh, back to Last of Us, even Kathleen. Everybody yeah. has a point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they um, fate like that's fake. Children yeah. die. Yeah, I, I mean, he he had. But easy for her to say because it, it seems like Kathleen doesn't have a child too, so so she never no, but could really. Be he lost he, her brother. He, yeah. Like, yeah, what she's saying was like, your brother. It sucks your brother had leukemia, but does that give you the right to kill my brother? Save your brother. Yeah, true. But leukemia. But also, the idea that yeah. you know the the brother of Kathleen would have saved more people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or would have prepared for the bloater. But anyways, going back to <laughs> going back to the menu. No, I think I think that. Uh, those zombies were coming up, but they, they showed it in the fourth episode. They were, but if uh, uh, Jung and I talked about this, it's it's the governing over the revolution, right? It's she hyper focused on the collaborators they instead mo- of they got another monster. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, yeah, we're back to the anyway, menu, yeah. going back to the menu. So, like, you know, not <laughs> I to remember, I was looking at the trailer where yeah. Nicholas Holt cried <laughs> because of the food. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, he just wanted to slow his face off. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it happens. Like, it, it happens. It, it I, happens. I've actually, I've actually seen people get in tears for eating something, and uh, but again, like I, I've eaten in some places like this, and I also had people that oh, it's uh, this place is much better. Like uh, I've never been to that place. Well, I don't speaking care. As I've a been, I've guy, been, the only yeah. time I'm going to cry is I've been starving for three weeks and I get a burger. <laughs> I'll probably cry. No, but I, I will cry if I haven't breadless bread. If I haven't breadless had bread. if I haven't had a strawberry in what twenty years, I would cry. Like, or if I, if I haven't eaten in three days and then you give me breadless bread, <laughs> I'd cry. Yeah, no, I mean I've had you know like, kind of like in Ratatouille, right? If if it brought me back to childhood for simpler times, yeah, definitely I'd cry for that. But but because I eat in the ocean. <laughs> Because, uh, again, I, I mean, I, 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 I did, uh, you know, a couple of birthdays ago. Yeah. One ex brought me to Nobu, which is like very basic. Nobu, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one star, one Michelin star restaurant here in New York. Everybody yeah, got to just Nobu. one star. Yeah. But I've, I've, for me, it's like I don't need a fucking one star restaurant. Give me a giant ass steak, mm-hmm. and I'd be happy. But I had a meal that was like changed my perception of what. A meal cost. Yeah. yeah, it's like this is just the most amazing piece of miso black cod that I've ever tasted. Piece of mm-hmm. thing that I've tasted. Like usually, the reason why I don't enjoy extremely expensive restaurants is back of my head. Like you know, I'd spend seventy bucks for a prime rib. We've done that. Yeah. That's fine. But in, I I enjoy it. But I in my head, it's like if I paid thirty five bucks for it, I'd be even taste even better it's always like that mm-hmm. and this time's like there are things there are things that will change your life like that food being one of them art being another maybe music 
Mm. But to be pretentious about it, to be yeah. like, you know, it's, yeah. it's one of those things where and you know, thing I was is, right there and then I, you, lost, you lost me, Tyler Holt. Yeah, and, and the, the obsession of the chefs, too. Uh, going back to Chef's Table, I think they featured Alinea one time, the, the, the Chicago restaurant. And I think the chef... I think he shared that he got sick at one point, and and he's complaining. Oh, I, I don't see my family anymore because I'm so obsessed with the with the restaurant. I was like, Yeah, you're so obsessed with tweezers and twigs. Uh, maybe focusing more on regular food <laughs> would help give you more li- work life balance. But again, it's the obsessions. And going back to Noma, this dude would uh, get like fifty pounds of seaweed just to extract the flavor. And to give you like a small plating of the sea, the ultimate seaweed. Uh, no, sorry, that's not sustainable. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, it's it. That's why now, like when uh, the comment section when that article came out that he's gonna close his restaurant, like uh, people are like, okay, so who's gonna be his last guest? Uh, are you are you sure you want to be the last guest? <laughs> so yeah, so. Yeah, I mean th- that's the joke now. Even in San Francisco, when uh people's like uh, when, a, when a when a fancy restaurant decided to close, they're like, oh uh, no, I don't want to be the last guest because who knows, it might be another author and good situation. <laughs> so. I would love for for one of those to happen in in real life, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm sure one of these chefs probably should be in my unit right now. <laughs> but yeah, just the, the whole group think on how. Uh, the staff and the chef decided to do it and go 100% on it. It's the cult. It's the cult. Uh, uh, it's a cult well, life, basically. The way I think about it now, if he was able to mind fuck uh, people in in a, mm-hmm. under a, under under a day, how much can he? Yeah. How much for he years? Right? To mind fuck those people for years, but I just wanted to see a little more like how they would have done it. But yeah, yeah, I that's true. If there's if, I mean, if there's a prequel for this movie, I might not watch it, but I might at least take a look at it. Like the okay, how, like 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 the the, the woman that was uh, sexually harassed by the, by the chef, the the critics like, I will write raving reviews because this meal that you served us was good. Just let us go, and then she's like, there was a time that I cared about what you said. Now I don't care anymore. <laughs> and actually, this is my idea that everybody dies. So, <laughs> So that was funny, but yeah, I mean, uh, but the the whole foodie Nicholas Holt uh, Instagram, uh, even after he's being told not to Instagram. <laughs> but for me, it's like, why are you taking pictures? You're gonna die, bro. But I also like that part. But, where you, said... you see, see, that's the thing too. Like, you know what's gonna happen, so you're just feeding your feed. Even though you're gonna die, what the f, man? I, for me, like, I in in one hand, like Nick, the Nicholas Holt character, the Tyler character, can either be, well, for ninety percent of the movie, he was the, the best, like he's enjoying the most, like he knows, like mm. he is ending his life with something that he he found something that he loved that he wanted yeah. his dream he got it, so I he was winning up until fucking. At the at the end, Tyler's bullshit. Yeah, well, like he was uh, no cohesion. He was he was uh, you know, yeah, you're a foodie, but you can't cook, right? But also, like the the idea of like you you just fucking kill yourself now, bro, because like you you didn't understand the assignment of you of, you missed the point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also like bringing the a, bringing a person. Yeah. I also like the part where the female chef said it, it was my idea, so I just want to know like. How did that come about? Did they brainstorm? Like, like how are we going to do like, this? Like, first we'll torture them, and then everybody dies. Like, like what? And we kill ourselves. Because <laughs> yeah, if that I was mean, her that's... idea, so what was Chef's idea originally? Like, so he didn't want to kill everybody? Like, or d- just yeah. kill themselves? Or kill himself? Me- and then everybody wanted to, like, oh, we want to join you. <laughs> I want to see how that that brainstorming came about. Yeah, th- that's the prequel I would watch. Uh, yeah, some of the dishes were already, like even made by other people. Like, yeah, it, it's it's fun. It's one of the. It's very. It's a. It's a great think piece. It's a short movie. It's fun. Mm. Uh, but again, yeah. this is one of those movies that you cannot just sit and open your eyes. You're gonna feel shit. Mm-hmm. You might feel crappy about some of the characters. You feel cringe in some areas. 
might feel sorry for some areas and you might understand some areas. It's not one of those like one note, you know, love story, one note. Um, and actually, there's no love story as far as I know. Yeah. Right? It's true. Yeah. Right? It's like the food. It's all about the food. Yeah, well, it's all about the food. And, uh, closing thoughts, uh, Chubax. Ratings? Um, I don't know. Now that we're thinking an 8 but let's give it a 9 for me because I really yeah. liked it Arnie it's a 9 for me it's basically uh, it made me think of uh, Chef the whole the old uh, John Favreau mm. Chef uh, opens a uh, uh, food truck because yeah, me, the it investor was of, yeah. it made me think of Burnt 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 yeah Burnt with uh, but, but, yeah, but basically like the, the whole angel investor or the investor telling you what to cook or the People telling you what to cook, so you lose your passion. Versus with John Favreau's character, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll just gonna make I'll just gonna make a Cuban sandwich food truck, and he got success. So yeah, it's it's a nine out of ten for me. I mean, of course, a lot of it is carried by Ray Fiennes and Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, I mean, she's just uh, just you just plop her in this front there. I'll watch. So pretty. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's yeah, it's a good also a good uh, portrayal. Like, even though she was portrayed as an escort, they never really sexualized her. I mean, openly, of course, the costume is still a little bit you know alluring, but you know, it, it's not in your face, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like you know, not all. I mean, most escort ex escorts do this kind of stuff rather than uh, mm -hmm. uh, those are like prostitute stuff. But yeah, I'm a nine two with a with a caveat where you have to be prepared. Like this is one of those, like mm -hmm. if, if I, if I didn't, so I watched this, I was, you know, I was in a theater, a small theater that served good food. Right. Oh. So I was like, it was a, it was prime. And I knew I was in my head. I was like, are they going to be hunted? Are they the ingredients for the meal? Mm -hmm. Is it something weird? Is it demonic? I had all that. I was prepared to feel weird stuff mm -hmm. in it. If this is not the type of movie where you're just blading through HBO Max and saw the menu and then plopped it on, you need to be a little prepared to watch this because it's it's not a yeah, yeah it, it makes you feel it's not a it's not a a pleasant feeling yeah. all the way through. So it's it almost you, seems like uh, it's like don't look up or the big short basically up. like yeah. a, lot, a lot of Adam McKay movies like yeah. you, you know if you if you like that stuff this is gonna be a great time but yeah, yeah. you can't just you can't just like come on. And it's like, oh, let's just watch this. You can light Saturday afternoon. Like, no, you mm -hmm. need to enjoy this. But this has been um, our review of the menu. We're all nines. Good, good movie. Yeah, yeah it went uh, longer than most of our reviews. <laughs> yeah. Question, question for the for the room. If if you are one of the guests, which one will you be? Uh -huh. There was a time I was the Tyler. Because I was like, oh, this food is so blah, 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 blah. But am I a, a finance bro too? I don't know. Uh, I, I never had that much. I don't know. Maybe John Leguizamo. <laughs> like, yeah, it I'll could be, be the like, mom. Oh, yeah. The, the mom does just I'll be the drunk mom in the, the corner. Just feed me and I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably be uh, the uh, maybe the assistant of the food critic. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good because he said it's good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, th this soup was split or something like that. Because, yeah, 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 it could be that too. <laughs> or it could be, I, I was probably like one of the lower end chefs. Like just doing the grilling or like the, <laughs> something like that. Oh, I, I probably Elsa, the assistant. Oh, yeah, Johnny Leguizano's assistant. No, 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 the, Elsa, the actual assistant. The, oh, the, uh, oh, yeah. The right hand. Yeah. Like you really wanted to die there, that you actually wanted to kill Margot. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the. Uh, I'm not the star, but I make shit run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm. All right, that's it. Right. Uh, guys, Chabox. Oh uh, yeah, really enjoyed. Yeah, Arnie. It's a great uh, movie. Uh, it's, all only thing it's missing is the secret ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Allo Cuisine. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, as a reminder, 
We have reviews on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesdays, we have D&D. Thursdays, we have our Reacts channel or React to trailers and short clips and featurettes. Friday, we have our second D&D show on our channel, youtube.com slash plus six, three HP. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, subscribe to our podcasts. If you don't want to watch uh, us, our faces, video on demand, uh, listen to us while you're working, while you're doing your chores. Uh, just search plus six or HP in your favorite podcasting app. We prefer Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon. Uh, with that, we will see you next week with the next episode of The Last of Us. We will also be discussing Megan. Just you know, I saw it. It's great. Megan. Um, I, I will try to watch that. before the It's a fun, week. fun movie. And uh, thank you very much for the view. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, cheeseburger! <laughs> <laughs>